The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business. Right here in Central New York, The Local Show is locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now your hosts, Tom and Steve. Matt Major, how are you, buddy? I'm doing all right. How are you, fellas? Very good. Very good, my friend. Uh, there was something I was going to ask you about. Uh, to, oh, yes, and now I remember. So, uh, you know, I've been looking for maybe another machine because I have my uh, big 17-inch um, laptop, my uh, Alienware, which, you know, okay. at one point Alienware was the, you know, top dog, man, I'll tell you what. And, and it's got all the modern stuff. It's only a couple couple years old. But yeah. during that time, they've replaced two motherboards in that dang thing, you know, and the power switch is integrated onto that motherboard and it just doesn't. You know, keep in mind Dell bought them. Yeah, so exactly. They were awesome, and then they became <laughs> more of a premium consumer. You know, they're a little better yeah. than the other Dell products, but not much. Bummer, you know. And and I've been really looking for high powered stuff. Tell me about some of the new when they say that something is AI. Um, you know, it's you know really when ready. they talk about uh, uh, that. Well, a you know it's like eighty five percent a gimmick. You know everything. Is, I thought so. You yes. gotta you gotta stick AI on on everything. Right, um, right, right. The, I saw some ladies cleaning the house, and you know they gotta say AI powered broom. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. Like I, put, I put it after my name on my business card. Yeah, it it is. Steve Roberts <laughs> AI. What do you think? Steve's got the marketing memo. That's just part of everything now. Um, uh, but 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 specifically, you know, in computing to to honestly take advantage of AI, it's a lot of the same types of things that we used for crypto. It's um, generally like GPUs, right? Like graphics processing things we used to just use for graphics and gaming. You can now dedicate to these specific functions, and that's why they're so good, and that's why um, you know they're good for AI. So mm -hmm. anytime you're boosting up. Uh, honestly, in some cases, very similar specs as a gaming computer right. also could lend itself to an AI computer. Yeah, because I need a good content creator one. Obviously, I always buy the maximum and I always overbuy yeah. because I want it to last a few years. You know, I so. mean, the other thing is, and keep in mind, you know, the majority of specifically what you're going to do with AI is uh, use these services you mm -hmm. know? Right. It's through a sure. web browser. You know, your your local computer Doesn't isn't necessarily it, yeah. doing that. Now, if you want to really get nerdy and, and set up your own models and, and run your own right, right. Uh, internal, which you very much can do. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you really care about that power in house. But yeah, yeah. Are there any AI mistakes? People like people go into AI. Well, I did this. Are there things that you see people doing that are just like create more problems than answers? Yeah, the first um, AI answer that Google ever popped up with when one day when I Googled an IT thing was it gave me step-by-step -step directions that I immediately recognized as wrong. Mm, how it was about the that? first result that I'd ever, you know, <clears throat> yeah. you know, it's not just a link. They literally started taking up a third of the page with, here's the AI answer to your question. I'm like, that's wrong. <laughs> right. And right. they even say, they say that um, AI can be wrong, right? They have yeah. that big disclaimer right there. <laughs> yeah. So stuff like that happens all the time. And that's, that's where the dangers, you know, there's a lot of people in, uh, in law, in um, mm -hmm. uh, research, things of that nature that very much use these tools because they're beneficial, but uh, you know, there can be some nuggets of just complete falsehoods mixed in with a lot of really good things. And that's that's where when you rely on it too much, we're not quite there. Can anymore. you recognize an AI generated, either of you guys, communication? If, some, if there's like a, a letter or a newsletter or an email, can you look at it and go, oh, that was AI, that's not a real ah, person. That's hard to do. Well, I work in the IT field, so half the people I deal with speak like AI. Right. <laughs> anyway. So They're like glorified androids. It's a little generally. challenging, but um, there is actually, there are AI tools that detect AI, and that's every educational yes. institution is now using this and running every kid's paper through it. Uh, and catching false positives. Yeah. There's uh, I know situations of, of college kids being accused of basically cheating with AI when they sat down and wrote that thing completely So someone themselves. that's really creative and has a great grasp on the language like myself could create something and then, no, uh, no. And, then um, and they could say, well, you cheated and I didn't. Right. Did you hear that, Tom? And unfortunately, it happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your local IT department is the name of your company. We're talking with Matt Major. Uh, tell people what your company is in general and what you, your experience is. Yeah. Uh, what we are is a business-to-business -business technology and cybersecurity services company. So uh, anything that a modern business needs to operate from a technical function. Uh, you know, everything from basic tech support, uh, my printer doesn't work, on to uh, complex networks, 
and now very much uh, a lot of aggressive cybersecurity things that mm -hmm. um, uh, we've had to jump into because the need is so great. Yeah. So are people making dumb, dumb moves with their things? Or I guess the question may be better said, what do things, what do people do that invites problems? Um, well, I mean, there's the basic mistakes, right? Like you get tricked into clicking on something that um, then launches a virus or gives somebody access, does things of this nature. That's still the most common I, thing that I occurs. get these text messages that I know are bogus. Yeah. It's like your Amazon package. You ever get those, Tom? Yes. Oh, yeah, or, or, or you have a FedEx package or yeah, um, 100%. Um, IRS or who knows what. And yep. it's got some cryptic email. It's, you know, check here to see if it's right. Um, yeah. Uh, those kinds of things, you're, are you one click away from the wheels falling off? Well, you can be, and that's see, that's where the protection piece comes in. And, and I would say at this point, uh, regardless of what people do, every business needs what they call managed endpoint protection. So this is goes beyond your, your antivirus that we've had for decades. Um, these are actual people that actively monitor every computer, every laptop for threats and a number of different things that can happen so that when someone was tricked or someone wasn't tricked, there's a vulnerability that a bad guy exploited, you know, a hacker in a movie almost, um, there are uh, people and tools in place to stop those things before they take over your whole company. So, so what you're saying is giving permission to someone like your company or that can hover over at his big brother and go, we're gonna check this thing every day or every week or whatever it is, and we're gonna challenge you if there's something that's maybe compromising, that so kind of a thing? 24 seven real time monitoring from, from a, what they call a SOC, a security operations center. And I picture it in my head as like a 911 center for okay. security alerts. Um, the second things happen, like a program sets itself to automatically start on your computer next time you reboot, that's how viruses work. And uh, you know things like that immediately trigger an investigation. And is this a legit thing or is it a virus? Um, if it is bad, uh, real people can go and isolate. Even at three in the morning, um, they can isolate your device from all the others on the network so things can't spread. And then clean it, you know, fix the problem. Um, and all ideally, like I said before, uh, anybody wakes up in the morning and and discovers their company's been robbed. Can you also help with uh, purchase decisions? So as we enter the holiday season and all the new tech is out there and then, you know, the new i9 processors oh, and yeah. beyond and neural nets and things like that. Yeah, for our clients, um, uh, we do that every day. Uh, and, and for friends, I, I give that advice all the time. But, um, you know, typically what we try to do is be a completely turnkey service for, so for our clients, uh, we offer advice and then we can provide and install those products. So it's not a matter of, uh, yeah, this is good. Go try to pick it up somewhere and, and best of luck. Um, we really try to help folks and give them that hand-holding experience for, for their products as well. So um, you can have a conversation with uh, socially inept IT people at your company? How's that work? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not and true. It's not true, actually, but uh, that is the stereotype. Mm -hmm. They can call 333-0999. Uh, th uh, That's it. If they want to have a, a conversation, um, maybe press a button or two, uh, get to talk no to No buttons. Someone. You speak a real person 24-7 wow. just by calling Look that at that. Uh, local IT D-E-P-T uh, for department dot com and um, get some help, get your business uh, lined up and don't let this cybersecurity <laughs> nightmare eat you up, right? That's it. Thanks for being here. Thanks, guys.